are areas in Kaduna State now where killings are going on. In Samfara, it's the same. You are aware of Benue, Taraba, of course, the Northeast entirely, and all over the country, armed robbery and kidnapping are going on. Now, how did you get here? So if we are gathered here to discuss the future of Nigeria, there has to be peace before you can plan ahead. Now, armed bandits have killed about 5,000 people in the last one year in San Fala State, according to his senator. Senator, I've got his name. Peter. Now, since the government has lost the monopoly of violence to criminals, and you can only do that in a failed state, where criminals take control of the monopoly of violence. That's what, that's what happened in our country. It is high time that we should call on the National Assembly to enact a law to allow military training for Nigerian citizens. I'm pending the enactment of that law. I'm calling on the president to make facilities available in those states where life has become totally endangered so that young men and women can receive military training. I'm not saying anything radical. This is in line with section 220 of the Nigerian constitution. It, it provides for military service. Secondly, an MP, Governor Rebbe Shola is here. I've, uh, I've challenged him on this. And I'm challenging all our governors. It is not the business of the federal government to maintain law and order in your state. Take it from me. A governor cannot go to the television and be crying if your people are killed. No. Under the Constitution, Section 214, we do not have a federal government police. We have the Nigeria Police Force, which shall be controlled, organized, and supervised by the Nigerian Police Council. Who are the members of the Nigerian Police Council? The President as Chairman, the Inspector General of Police, the Chairman of the Police Co uh, Service Commission, and the 36 state governors. So you have a body where the governors constitute the majority to determine the fate of, of, of the police. The president cannot appoint an inspector general of police without seeking your consent or remove one. But what has happened since 1999? The governors have totally, with profound inspector, abdicated that responsibility of managing the Nigerian police force to the president. So when an IG is to be appointed or removed, governors consent. No governor's consent is sought. You are only informed in a meeting. We have appointed one and he's going to be, he's acting. This is his CV and nobody will oppose. And that is the end of the matter. And that's why we're in this mess. We had cases in the second republic sir. And in this republic, we had the Supreme Court has held that the governor of a state, it's not just, it's not decoration. You are the chief law officer in your state. And you have the power to give instructions to the police. The only time he can disagree with your instructions is when he says, please, I want to confirm with the president. And under this dispensation, I've never heard of a situation where a governor orders a commissioner of police, please go and bring down the protest in my state. Go and look for the kidnappers that are causing problems in my state. And the commissioner says, no, because today, Your Excellency, the only thing done by Abuja with respect to the police is the payment of their salaries, the operational allowances, equipment, and the rest of them have become have been abandoned to the state. Why then are you not taking control of the law and other situation in your state? The one that is painful for me as a lawyer. And I have challenged my colleagues who are attorneys general in Taraba, Benue, and the rest of them. Scores of murder suspects have been arrested. At the last count, over 300. Not one has been prosecuted for murder or culpable homicide. 
So in any country where there is impunity, killings must continue. In the recent primaries of the APC in many states, killings took place, and you can be sure nothing will happen to any of those killers. And that's why killings must continue in our country. So if you want to talk of a new country, talking of a better Nigeria, peace is fundamental. Our people must live as they used to live, in peace and tranquility. We must really get our leaders. The people are saying, oh, Buhari has not stopped this killing. Buhari will not take anybody to court. It's, murder is not a federal offense. It's a state offense. And so we must begin to get our state government to be much more responsible. On the way forward, I'm not... Uh, I, I, I think people are not being fair when they say somebody like you. Somebody said you are not a politician. We are politicians. Not the APC, PDP one. Because you can be in APC in the morning and be in PDP in the afternoon and then return <laughs> in the evening. No, no, I'm not. Uh, we prefer respect to my friends here, family and other. I, I'm not a member of the. And I'm not likely to be. Please, I want to direct your attention to Chapter 2 of the Constitution. It has really addressed the way forward for our country, the fundamental objective. It says, the economy of Nigeria shall be planned by the government. We used to plan the economy of our country. Sir. We used to have five-year development plan, renewable. But what happened? With the with structural adjustment program, we were told to allow everything. Let everybody find this level. You don't need to plan. Secondly, the Constitution says, the resources of our country shall be equitably distributed in a way that wealth shall not be concentrated in the hands of a few or a group. What has happened, sir? Again, Mr. Governor, why should Femi file an half an oil block? And I go and sell it to some Chinese and I make $2 billion. And I, do, I say, I don't know what to do with the money. Oh, you are not aware of what I'm saying? <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, State governments are not giving oil blocks so that they can raise money to pay salaries and invest. That is against giving oil blocks to individuals. It's against Section 16 of the Constitution. Even though they say that aspect of our Constitution is not justiciable, we have made laws, and this will interest our politicians. Laws have been made. We have struggled and forced the Nigerian ruling class to make concessions. For instance, sir, every child by law shall be in school from primary to junior secondary school, free of charge. So we shouldn't have children on the street. Yeah. Dr. Mongalu, this will interest you. Secondly, secondly, every Nigerian child, if I say criminal offense, not to put your child in school, some of us are going to test this very soon. Well, because if we get people to go to school, if we build hospitals, as the law requires, there will be little left to steal, as it is the case now. Thank you very much.